When it comes to horror, there are subgenres galore, all with their own recognizable tricks and tropes. The slasher, where teenagers are picked off one by one. The haunted house, full of creaky doors and moving portraits. The gothic, with its stormy nights and shrieking damsels. But there's one subgenre that's a little less easy to define, and it happens to be my favorite folk horror. Folk horror has no real definition and is a term coined as late as 2004 in an interview for Fangoria magazine with director Piers Haggard in reference to his 1971 film Blood on Satan's Claw, a movie that sees the devil possess a small rural village in 18th century England. Blood on Satan's Claw would soon join forces with Michael Reeves' 1968's Witchfinder General and Robin Hardy's 1973's The Wicker Man to create the Unholy Trinity, three British films that are often hailed as the introduction to folk horror cinema. Witchfinder General is filmed across the rural locations of East Anglia and follows Vincent Price as Matthew Hopkins as he burns men and women under the guise of witchcraft during the Civil War. The Wicker Man sees Edward Woodward's policeman head to a rural location in Scotland to investigate a missing girl and is confronted by Christopher Lee's pagan leader. Currently, the only thing these films have in common seems to be rural locations. Surely that's not enough to generate an entire subgenre. So how do we spot a folk horror? In his book, Folk Horror, Hours Dreadful and Things Strange, Adam Scovell created the Folk Horror Chain, a linking series of potential cause-to-effect, narrative, aesthetic and thematic aspects that can all add together to essentially form folk horror. These are landscape, isolation, skewed moral beliefs and a violent happening or summoning. When applied to the unholy trinity, we can find obvious examples of the chain in action. All three movies are shot in broad daylight, with environment and landscape framing and adding to a lot of the horror. All take place in isolated areas, be it a literal island, a singular village or a cut-off area of the countryside. Skewed moral beliefs are shown in our characters across the Trinity, with many a violent happening being the result of a paganistic ritual or accusation of witchcraft that has stemmed from these beliefs. Using Scovell's chain, we can start to see folk horror tropes in cinema even before the Unholy Trinity, with plenty of silent films laying the foundations, including Huxan, a 1922 Swedish film that focuses on the rise of witchcraft within Europe. You're also able to start spotting folk horror in places you didn't even think to look, with one of my favourite examples being Edgar Wright's Hot Fuzz. There is arguably a current renaissance occurring with recent movies such as Ari Aster's Midsummer and Robert Eggers' The Witch falling nicely into the subgenre. Keeping the tradition in Britain is director Ben Wheatley with his films such as Kill List, Sightseers and A Field in England. All very different movies, but all arguably folk horrors. With lots more discussions to be had about the empowering role of women within the genre, but a distinct lack of female writers or directors, I could talk about this subject for hours. But for now, I'll leave you with this quote from Andy Patrick. One may as well attempt to build a box the exact shape of mist, for like the mist, folk horror is atmospheric and sinuous. It can creep from and into different territories, yet leave no universal defining mark of its exact form.